Now welcome to another edition of News from Naboo with Four Sliding Takes. And let's get right to the news. We do have an interesting story to cover for you today. But first, tomorrow, 11 a.m. Central Time, we're going to be getting the first official story trailer for Star Wars Outlaws. It's going to be going up on YouTube, 11 a.m. Central Time. There's also this beautiful new key art for the game that I'm sure we've got up on the screen for you. Some countries have already been advertising the ratings for the game, and usually when they do that, it's really close to coming out, so I imagine this trailer will also come with a release date. Do we know what the rating is on the game? Well, depending on the country, Australia has it rated M for Mature, South Korea has 19+, and Brazil is 14+. That's kind of strange. (laughs) One country's like, no, no, 19, the other one's like, eh, 14's fine. They all have their own guidelines as to why, of course, they are rated as such, but... It's exciting nonetheless because we will probably see the U.S. rating of the game as well as know maybe when it comes out. Maybe a release date, yeah. Maybe a release date. I know I was very interested in this game. I like the fact that you can kind of play around with reputation with different factions, though it will not affect the story, which is almost a little disappointing. That's a lot disappointing, yeah. Yeah, but at the same time, within Star Wars, you do need to have a canon story. You can't choose your own adventure quite as freely. Well, I mean, (laughs) it sounds great in theory, but... Some Star of the Wars canon their needs own a solid story. Kind of yeah, yeah, we will obviously have more on that. I might do a video on my channel for that Ooh. too. We'll see how that looks. All right, let's move into our more meaty article, shall we say? Coming out ahead of the issue of Empire Magazine, we are getting more information about some of the articles contained therein. Okay, about the acolyte, you mean? Yes. Everybody's favorite uh, topic of discussion. Yes, this article is supposed to cover. Leslie Headland explaining the detective angle in her new series, as well as the meaning of the title of the show. I know a lot of fans out there, and including a fan in this room, we've been having issues with her red lightsaber in the trailer. If well, the questions, Sith, yeah. According to Keanu Mundy, I mean, the Sith have been gone for millennia. They're extinct. Yeah. He could be exaggerating. I mean, well, it could be his point of view. I mean, everything Keanu Mundy says is in fact, I mean... I don't know. It's got a big head. It's got a lot of information up in there. Yeah, about Wookiees. <laughs> what? Uh, I mean, what about the droid attack on the Wookiees? What about it? What about it? Did he ever find out? Was he well, just Yoda asking? Well, you know, so it got taken care of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I suppose. Well, she did not respond exactly to the questions about the lightsaber, obviously maybe waiting for the show to come out to answer some of those sure, more yeah. looming and important questions. But she did say that this show is essentially a story kind of about the ticking clock on the Jedi Order and how it got to zero during the prequels. Okay. She said, I was very interested in how the Jedi get to where they are in Phantom Menace. You're definitely getting a sense that with the Jedi, the writing may be on the wall. See, that's what always makes me think of Plagueis and I get excited because we know that the downfall of the Jedi was partially uh, set up by Palpatine. Well, he, yeah. well, he obviously set the dominoes up and let them knock them down and yeah. order 66 them eventually. If this is farther back in time, I mean, how long were the Master Apprentice Sith-ish duo planning on taking down the Jedi? Are we laying foundation a hundred years before the prequels that eventually do lead to the downfall? Well, I mean, I'm kind of curious, like, how the writing is on the wall a hundred years before? Like, what? I mean, how does it... I, I don't know. I, I'm not going to try to speculate too much here mm-hmm. but it does seem to be uh, that's a lot of time 100 years is a long time so is is that implying like the sith as you're kind of suggesting have this game plan started 100 years ago and we're going to get like oh oh i yeah look at that game plan it's going to be so good with palpatine <laughs> there's springs a, check, it 100 there's years a checklist later. become the senate is it near the oh bottom <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah it's underlined and underscored a couple times yeah become the senate uh, I don't know, like, I mean, because th- this could be dealing with Plagueis, I-, I don't know. I mean, again, it could be Tenebris, who comes before Plagueis, it could be before Tenebris, though that wouldn't make any sense, and mm-hmm. and that, that's assuming she even keeps that, she doesn't have to, like, she's made mention of the EU, and she was like, oh, I could bring things in from the EU, so mm-hmm. you would imagine Plagueis and the book would be what she's talking about What if extent? she uses names but changes things? What if the character of May is actually Darth Tenebris? <laughs> I, I know, I know. I saw it in your face the moment I thought of it and the moment I said it. But there's nothing saying that they decided that maybe Tenebris is no longer, what, a Bith? He was yeah, a Bith, he was right? A Bith, yeah. yeah. Maybe Tenebris is no longer a he and a Bith, and now it's a, it's a May. It's a, it's a May. 
it's a may. Well, we, I mean, that is a possibility. Sure. Or perhaps, I mean, we, well, I'll get into this later. I have more to say on the Tenebrous theories. Let's okay. Say. Well, do you know this show, Headliner said it over and over again, is supposed to focus on the villains, with Amanda Stenberg's evil May being, like, the main character of the show, that there are a vast array of Jedi characters and plenty of stories set up for them. We've got, you know, of course, Lee Jun Jae's Master Soul, which Headland described as massively and respected and incredibly powerful. Jackie Lan, of course, being his Padawan, who was apparently only going to show up in, like, two episodes. We saw some crediting, and it was like she's in, like, number one and number five. Hmm. So not a huge character, but she's described by Headland as she wants to be perfect for him. Because she is his Padawan and all that sure, jazz. Yeah. There's also Jedi Knight Yord Fondir, who Charlie Bartnett is playing. And he's described as kind of a jerk. He's a little bit of a goody two-shoes. Why is being a goody two-shoes make you a jerk? If you're that one kid on the playground where the kids are all doing something I'm fun, telling. but it's against the rules. and Yeah. He's going to be that guy. He might be a little much. Yeah, maybe that guy. The brown noser. I'm going to tell the council on you. This show has got a lot of Jedi. And like we said, there's an ensemble type feel. But Headland says the quote-unquote war in this Star Wars is much smaller, more personal one. The war between people, the war between characters. This isn't a massive scale war, you know. It's well, it shouldn't this be, is going to be yeah. a small personal war. Okay. Which is kind of good That's that she's fine. not trying no, to. It shouldn't be a war make a whole sh- war going on. There was a war between the Jedi and the Sith. <laughs> he had a moon, he just somehow he forgot. forgot. Somehow. Oh yeah, that you know that war. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. We saw him a hundred years ago. Mm-hmm didn't happen on Kashyyyk, so I didn't really care about it. Yeah. As to her detective story, mystery thriller, she says, It's one story with several reveals and new clues and new information each episode. It's not just a mystery that you have to find out. It's not unlike Russian Doll. It's almost like a spiral. It digs deeper and deeper. It's going to get even more intriguing and gripping because of that detective genre. It's going to keep you on the edge of your toes wanting to guess. Well, that's good. I like theorizing. I like guessing. As I'm long sure. as there's payoff. What are you talking about? Mm, you know what I'm talking I've about. I've never had anything in the Star Wars universe uh, <sighs> have mystery boxes that didn't pay off well. I also like never. it if it's so good of a mystery that A, I didn't figure it out, or okay. I figured it out really late in the game, and B, it's not that I didn't figure it out because it wasn't set up at all. Like, I want see, there to be breadcrumb crews but enough that I could see them, but not exactly see how it all comes together until the end. Without having to be like, no, this came out of left field out of nowhere. That's, I, I hate mysteries when they're like, yeah, you didn't see it coming because you, you never even gave us any clues or alluded to it at all. You mm-hmm. kept that completely from us, so of course we didn't guess. But anyway. Right, right. Yeah. Then they asked about the title. Who is the Acolyte? How is she using this word, this as her title? She did address this. She said, it's a position, essentially, that someone is going to fulfill or step into. We know with the Sith there is a master, we know there is an apprentice, but in Deep EU, there's a concept of an acolyte, which is underneath apprentice. So that's where I got the title from. Okay. I mean, there was a rumor, so if you don't want to hear this rumor, you should click away. There was a rumor at one time, and this is where I'm going to relate it back to what I was trying to talk about earlier with Tenebris. What if Tenebris is a Sith looking for an apprentice? And in order to find an apprentice, he recruited a bunch of angry darky force user type kids edgy yes because we had heard a rumor that he there was like almost like a competition to become his apprentice (laughs) and that these would all be acolytes yeah i mean yeah i i I don't like i don't think the rule of two has been like you know Mm -hmm. obviously even as we see it in the time of the empire like it's not perfect right there's always it's never two it's always like well Mm -hmm. the apprentice has his own kind of guy on the side and he's trying to recruit and <laughs> well so that's where my master. big question is what if this still is about tenebris what if tenebris is looking for their their actual apprentice and may is one of the acolytes yeah i think that's probably what it's going to be what honestly. if at the end of the series you know, plagueis is actually chosen Over to be may. the apprentice yeah that would be really good. I mean, that would set up stuff that we already know. We As long as it's not like the Jedi are, they have all these clues and then they're like, oh, we just kind of forget. Mm-hmm. Like, because we, again, we've seen, what we've seen in the trailer kind of implies, like, there's going to be some fighting here. Right. So. There's definitely some sort of, I mean, you don't have all the Jedi lighting up their sabers for nothing, right? Yeah. But no, I, I, I do think she could be doing something like that where she's like, well, this is, maybe it won't be Tenebrous. Maybe it'll be a different name. But you, you have Plagueis already cemented in the canon with 
Revenge of the Sith, obviously, right? Mm-hmm. So you can't change that. Well, you shouldn't change that. Yeah, let's use the word shouldn't. Yeah, so is there a possibility that May is going to compete with Plagueis and uh, eventually lose out or maybe beat him and that pisses him off and he goes and gets his own apprentice? I, I suppose. It's hard to say. I suppose she might do that. Or the end of the story is that May doesn't survive. They get rid of her and they think that any sort of dark side threat is gone by getting rid of May. Meanwhile, leaving Tenebris and his apprentice Plagueis to start down their path that leads to the yeah, prequels. Yeah, well, Tenebris had another apprentice too. So, I mean, it kind of kind of goes along with what you're even suggesting here because Tenebris had Venomous as well. So Venomous being a code name, so maybe she's taking the place of Venomous. Maybe because Venomous dies, so... Hmm? <laughs> I don't know my EU as well as you do. Yeah, it's, it's fine. It is. I just connect dots where I see them. You see dots, and yeah, you do like <laughs> to connect dots. That is one of your specialities, one might say. Mm. All right, let's move into new this week and Star Wars, etc. On Tuesday, well, you didn't, you didn't do your song. Oh, oh that's, I was too distracted <laughs> by thinking about <laughs> well, Tenebris becoming Tuesday, a becoming a May. The Living Force will hit the bookshelves if anyone wants to watch the Road Trip of the Jedi Council. Is that this? Week? That's wow. this, yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, it's Tuesday, the same day as the Star Wars Outlaw trailer and possible release date. Wow, I have to yeah. go to the bookstore, or is it coming in the mail? I would have to check everywhere I order from to see where I, if I ordered it and where it would be coming yeah, from. I didn't realize that was coming so soon. Oh, right. yeah, yeah, Tuesday. Wednesday, we have Bad Batch, Episode 12, Juggernaut. The Death of Wrecker. Oh, don't say it. I don't want to hear you saying that. That's well. too sad. Uh, then we have X Men ninety seven episode five. The Juggernaut. Yeah, remember it. <laughs> that was actually a, from season one, but I know I'm not clever. For comics, we have Darth Vader forty five, High Republic six, and Thrawn Alliances number four, which I believe is supposed to be the conclusion to the story. Wow, only took four. I haven't I haven't been read. I read the book, so I haven't. <laughs> I know. Only took four comics to wrap up that whole book. Whole thing, four books. Wow. Okay. Unless it's just concluding a storyline out of the books. Yeah, I don't know how that would be, but eh, maybe. I don't know. Thursday, we have voice chat, 8 p.m. Central Time. Till like 2 or 3 in the morning. That's what it was last yeah, week. Yeah, it was. I had to check out before then, but it was long. Yeah, I was there till the end. I've been uh, been staying all the way. It's a, it gets a little weird at uh, the wee hours. Oh, We also have on Amazon Prime, all episodes of Fallout are being released. Wow, okay. Mm-hmm. I'm not super familiar with the Fallout Never franchise. Never played any of the games, no. But I am mildly interested. I'm always interested. Hmm. That's it for the week. Oh, all right. Well, that's, uh, I guess that's going to be all we got for you this time, then. So now it is your turn to take to the comments below and tell us what you think of any and all of today's news. And let's talk some Star Wars. And so, until next time, thanks for watching.